Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're talking about the short story, The Comet by W.E.B. Du Bois. Um, and a couple things at the top. Uh, there is a racial slur uh, used by a white character in the story. Um, but other than that, let's go ahead and hop into it. And as always, we're going to start with an opening passage. Um, Slowly, noiselessly, they move toward each other. The heavens above, the seas around, the city grim, and the dead below. He loomed from out the velvet shadows, vast and dark. Pearl white and slender, she shone beneath the stars. She stretched her jeweled hands abroad. He lifted up his mighty arms, and they cried to each other, almost with one voice. The world is dead. Long live the honk honk. Hoarse and sharp, the cry of a motor drifted clearly up from the silence below. They started backward with a cry and gazed upon each other with eyes that faltered and fell, with blood that boiled. Now, that's a passage from kind of near the end of the story at kind of a big dramatic turn for the story. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the notes. Um, but let's go ahead and move on into the summary. The Comet by W.E.B. Du Bois is a short apocalyptic story written in the 1920s. In it, the Earth passes through the trajectory of a comet's tail, seemingly causing the death of almost all human life. Only two people seem to have survived. The first is our main character, Jim Davis, a working-class black man, first referred to as the messenger in the story, who survived by being deep in a bank vault when the comet passed by, and the second is Julia, a privileged young white woman who survived while in a dark room developing photography. Jim wanders the city initially, stopping to eat at a restaurant that he notes he would not have served him um, before, obviously. Now everyone's gone, so no one is there to serve him anyways. You get the idea. Um, until he comes upon Julia crying out for help. The two travel the city, trying to place calls or create signals to see if anyone else is alive. Um, the text frames them as a sort of Adam and Eve and describes that the social constructions of race and class don't exist in their private apocalypse or new dawn, if you want to think of it that way. However, it's at that moment that Julia's father, her fiancé, and other white men appear. It's revealed that only New York was affected by the comet, and the story optimistically, according to some critics, ends with Julia sparing Jim's life by convincing her father that he saved her. As Julia leaves with her fiancé, a black woman appears and embraces Jim. Uh, which takes us into our notes for this story. Uh, although a comet may seem like a strange apocalypse to us, in 1910s there was hysteria about passing through Halley's Comet, uh, Comet's tail, sparking some to sell anti-comet umbrellas and pills in the belief that the tail of the comet would spread poisonous gas onto the Earth. Um, in this story, you know, there's some groundwork laid for future black speculative fiction. It. Nisi Shaw remarks on Tor on the parallel between this work and Get Out. Um, spoilers, the dramatic ending of both rely on the fantastical being pulled back into a more grounded scene by the arrival of an outside party and how the scene looks to said outside party. And you can check out her full article titled Expanded Course in the History of Black Science Fiction, W.E.B. Du Bois' The Comet. And I'd like to pull two paragraphs from this article in particular, um, and they're the paragraphs you're seeing up on the screen right now. And this is what she says. Maybe you're unfamiliar with the term Becky slang for the sort of privileged young white woman who's offended by being labeled as such. For me, there's the added connotation of strong physical attractiveness combining with racial cluelessness to make the Becky dangerous, and especially dangerous to any black boys or men in her vicinity. Julia, the heroine of the comet, is a Becky. That Davis survives their encounter is an outcome resonant with the author's unusually positive and neutral experiences of whiteness in childhood. The Becky... Julia's, or the Becky Julia's presence underscores Du Bois' dichotomous perception of the world. She is white and female in complete, sorry, white and female in complement and contrast to the hero Davis's black maleness. Her deadliness is at first superseded by the comets, but when the comet's deadliness is finally shown to be less than universal, the Becky returns, though not in full force, because the threats and epithets that it renders, it renders Davis susceptible to remain purely verbal through the story's end, um, which takes us into our kind of big question, um, thinking about kind of the relationship between this work and more modern works of speculative fiction by marginalized writers, by historically marginalized writers. Um, and our big question for the story is, one of the big questions of the story is, what does this early work suggest about the perspective of marginalized fiction, speculative fiction as a whole? And what are we to make of this apocalypse almost turned genesis? Um, as always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answer. Hopefully you enjoyed this story. Um, it's publicly available online. Thanks for watching.